Lars Rass, Peter Hoover, Go Hex, Freedom is Pepsi, or... We, we whoops i did it again by we, the way we are back in xp 11 yeah we are in xp 11 apache x2 thank you for the 10 months appreciate the subscribe thank you for uh, for being here in the 10 months we got uh, risa we got short circuit we got uh, miles ahead we got josh j gibbs in the house chief lynn uh big crew here average gamer we got uh chili willies chili willies chili willies i got a i got a question for you why is my why maybe I'll have to troubleshoot with you chili Willis. my deep bot's not sending any sounds we got uh who else Peter we got uh man Lewis Maverick Mad Hatter Fly Kiddo Lewis yeah everyone's here thank you guys for joining me it's a special stream um we're going to be showing uh, a little preview of the uh the TBM 900 um hopefully uh most of you if not all of you I hope we're able to catch uh, Josh J. Gibbs uh, streaming the TBM 900 uh, earlier today. I really enjoyed that stream, Josh. That was a lot of fun. And kudos to you. Oh. Happy holidays. First year in the books. Happy holidays, Iowa Scotsman, with the first official one-year celebration. Uh, many of you here have the one-year badge. We are debuting uh, the one-year chat badge here on the John Fly stream. So I can already see a couple of them in the chat. So one-year badge. And here's the funny part. Is that badge is identical to this. This beautiful jet on my shirt is the chat badge, the one year chat badge. And the irony of the situation is there was zero coordination between my daughter who made this shirt and that chat badge. It just f free clip art, baby, free clip art. <laughs> minds, great minds. Anyway, it, yeah, Josh had a good stream today. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're excited to to play around with this uh, with this TBM, I'm gonna try to get uh, uh, Todoriko here on on the the phone on the old telephone ski here in just a moment. But before I do that, I need I need to make sure that that people are uh, that people are watching the correct things today. So I'm here at Albuquerque, right? And I'm in the cutter hangar, right? Well, let's just go over here to the cutter FBO and see what they're doing on inside the cutter FBO. And what are they doing? They're chit-chatting out front, but they're in the lobby. And what are they watching? Oh, that's interesting. They're, they're glued to this guy streaming the uh, Flight Factor A320 Ultimate with a Global Sim Alliance t-shirt on. Yes, at Cutter here, they do not mess around. All right, back to the hangar, and let's see if we can get Todoriko on the line here. Oh, what a beautiful bird. Oh, what a beautiful bird. All right, let's see if we can call him. Let's see if he listens. Yes, even showing the better pushback. Exactly, the better pushback is being shown live at Cutter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the shoulders. Yep, the shoulders. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can see if he's around here. I don't know. We got to may have some technical difficulty here. Let's see what happens. Test one, two, test. Oh, yep. You're green. You're lighting up. It's probably on my end. Hold on. It could be on my end. Half of the phone's not working. All right, there. I think you're here. I think you're live. Hello? Oh, whoa. I got to turn you down. Oh, you're coming in on seven different directions here. Let's turn down my 40-inch 4K TV by Samsung, the, the JU6500. How are you doing, Todoriko? Hey. We got to subscribe. 
John Flyos Nag, three months young. Do we have a Twitch baby bump yet? We do have a little bit of a bump showing, Brett. Thank you for the subscribe, the three months. I appreciate that. <laughs> thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, so yeah, Todoriko, uh, how copy? Uh, Rigi 5. Cool. I'm just going to tweak the volume here a little bit. Uh, it's always a balance here. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. How has your Tuesday been? Oh, it's been pretty good. Just been visiting family, and uh, I got the rest of the week off. So, yeah, it's coding day, coding week for x Blank for me. Nice. I, um, I hope you had a good Christmas. Oh, yeah. It was fun. Good. I had a good time. I... It's funny that, you know, for so many years growing up as a child, you know, the presents were the highlight, giving and, and receiving. This Christmas, my highlights were actually cooking because I don't cook very often. So I made an absolutely amazing uh, clam chowder from scratch, and then I did a fancy-dancy uh, baked omelet also. So I've been in the kitchen. Sweet. Yeah, having a good time. But family, family time's good. Glad you are able to spend some time with them. I am going to have, if you're if you're okay with it, we've done this once before, but we're gonna we're, we're gonna have to do a cold and dark, since we have the oh, developer definitely. live. So I think I'll just go ahead and let you get me started, as if I'm like an, you know, let's pretend I'm a PPL, but I'm just about to buy a TBM, and you want to teach me how to fly it. <laughs> sure. So. First order of business for every streamer is to adjust their green screen, make sure it's not bleeding through. Oh, dang it. It only bleeds through in the hangar, I promise. Hold on. Let's see. Which side is it bleeding through? It's bleeding through on this. Uh, on your right hand, under your right arm, and a little bit under your left arm. But The, the reason that it's bleeding through is because I'm showing my cockpit shirt. If I take the camera a little bit higher... It's not bleeding through as much. Oh, hold on. I gotta adjust this. This is a part of the TBM checklist, guys. If you don't already know, watch this. There we go. A little less bleed, maybe. <laughs> That's oh no, still bleeding through. I should mess with the chroma key. It's very, very important. It's kinda like the uh what's that guy? The um con uh What's those funny guys? Uh, Flight of the Concords, where they the business time video where they says that the recycling is very important. Well, the green screen is very important. So you tell me if this filter maneuver makes a difference here. Similarity, similar. No, no, go the other way. No, nope. right there. That's about the best we're gonna get it right now. I hope you approve. Oh, I, I approve for any anything. I mean, even if you had no green green screen, so I'm happy either way. <laughs> I just figured that it's probably something that you will, you pay attention to. So you're just right. You an extra you're right. By. It's like afterwards when I review all the craziness, then uh, then yeah, I go, oh dang it, I screwed that up. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have here going on? We got uh, the odds the engine survived the startup are. 38%. Is that what Vegas is saying right now? B2? Oh. Is this... No, I do not have 11.20 uh, VR1. Uh, Sasho, have you tried 11.20? No, I don't have VR, so uh, there's okay. no point for me to get it. I don't either. I'm assuming that we have, what, probably five or six good options as far as a, a set for VR. I don't even know which one is kind of the one to go with other than the oculus but uh, well i mean the only two two bit the two big ones that i know about are obviously oculus and the hcc vive and anything else is sort of a bit player and yeah. I'm, I'm not really following the vr space to be honest i'm personally i'm i'm, I'm sort of more interested in having a physical cockpit mm. something something that i can actually touch yeah yeah, I, I think that I'll dabble in the VR, but it's not something that at this point that I'll probably... It's not very streamable, I'm assuming, because you're, obviously your your audience is not looking at it in VR yet. Yeah, yet I mean, is if, if it, yeah, I mean if, not, not just that, but if you imagine the amount of disorientation that people get from head tracking, just yeah. multiply that by a factor of 10 and you've got the amount of 
uh, dizziness that will invo invoke in your viewers yeah. Yeah. in VR. You run the Vive Chili in your testing? Nice. I, I'm going to keep tabs on that for sure. All right. Well, what's next? Green screen is now checked. Yeah, all right. So green screen is a, a checked. Um, just make sure that uh, that you are running the a reasonably recent beta of the TBM. Uh, did you download it? When did you last? When did you last update it? About an hour ago. Okay, then you're running the latest. Okay. Well, if it's not complaining about there being an update, then it is the latest. Okay, cool. Um, so you'll want to check. You want to set your registration mark on the airplane that you want to fly as. So okay. you'll find that in the plugins under TBM. Oh, plugins TBM. Okay, click on plugins. Uh, TBM 900 change aircraft registration and unfortunately because I'm running 4k it's going to be very very small for the for the the viewers here but uh, let's get an outside view and let's see this registration number change dynamically I really liked the uh, the D D dash snack so I'll in that in that uh, sure in that uh, I'll just go S K. No, snack air S A. All right, show on the fuselage. Okay. All right, so I got that in there. Do I have to load up a particular livery in order for it to show up? No. No, just hit, hit apply. Okay. It didn't sh there. Oh, there it is. It just took. Oh, that's nice. I like that. So there you go. November it five seven two Sierra Alpha. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, it'll just appear on any lever livery that you've got installed. It's done as a separate overlay that, that just sits right nice, over the livery, nice, and nice. it dynamically retextures that. I like that. You can change the color, you can change the position, and, and even the font. Wow, that's really cool. All right, I won't mess around with the colors right now. I like the white right now. All right, that is set. Cool. All righty. So to get the airplane started up, uh, uh, you might want to choose if you want to do a ground power start or if you want to do a battery start. Or And do you have do you, a do you, route? Do you, uh, well, first off, do you mind if I use better pushback to tow this out of the hangar before we attach the GPU? I'm not sure it's going to work right. Really? So I'd rather okay. not try it out. I haven't tried it out, to be honest. Okay. Well, with... it might work, but I haven't tried it. Hmm. If it fails, oh well. Right? Why wouldn't we'll it work? See. Um, there is some overrides that are being done by the TBM for the nose wheel steering. Okay. And those might get a little bit messed up with better pushback. But I'm, like I said, it might it might be fine. It might not be fine. So I haven't tried that to be honest. Well, I can put you in contact with the developer of better pushback. Oh, cool. 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 We I might mean, be able I, to work something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little communication between those two. All right. Um, I won't do that. But I, I'm thinking that in normally we would not have the GPU on in the hangar. So I guess we'll do a non-GPU start. Yeah, um, sure. Unless you want to showcase the GPU. I can put it in the well, hangar if you want anyway. To you're going to show it off. I mean, it's really a placeholder of texture right now. I mean, there is a little bit of texture on it. Uh, I've textured it since the last of my streams, I think. Yeah. All right. So you should be able to see it. I'm going to try the better pushback. I lied. <laughs> okay, cool. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, it's not like, you know, it's the end of the world. Let's see whose voice we get today. You want to pull forward, not push back, because you're going to go through the wall. There's a wall at your back. Oh, I thought I went the other way. I thought I went uh, forward and out. Did I not do that right? Yeah. Well, you, you want to push. And you want to tow yourself forward. So, so just tell them to stop. stop. Just go to stop. Okay. Stop better push back, and you can start a new one. Okay, so... Build a spear meeting. If, oh, I was, going out, I was going out the back. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do control S. The other thing I didn't get was sounds. Uh, I want to delete the... The, delete the plan. Uh, you're going out the back of the hangar. Oh, yeah, you're right. I was. Okay, so let's go right out to th there. 
And then one other thing I want to do is I, I mean, you, you can always sure just, that. you know, click and drag the, the, the screen and the better pushback view. I don't know why more people don't do that. Click and drag the screen? Oh, yeah, yeah rather than zoom out? Rather than use, like, keys to move the view around. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to try to get the sounds here. So if we come up here, sound, and, oh, that's all enabled. Maybe I got, I'm not sure why I'm not getting any uh, tug driver sounds. Oh, well. All right, so what you're, saying, what you're saying is, is that using the keys to move around, all I do, and you're saying you can just drag the screen. Yeah. Like this with the mouse, like what I'm doing here. And rather than using the arrows. Yep. It's just a habit. You probably see a lot of people do that, huh? Yep. <laughs> well, I don't know why people overcomplicate it for themselves, I guess. Yeah, exactly. But it really, it really works like an iPad. That's the whole idea is to make it as intuitive as possible. <laughs> I'm missing a lot of the chat here, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, Canadian registration needs mo one more letter. Dang it. They don't have three letter Canadian registrations. That no, Neil, that's not this the, the the outside textures are are not even close to being final. Not even close. This is this is in I would even is this I would still consider this alpha or is would you consider this yeah, beta? It's pretty it's pretty, it's alpha. Yeah. Beta would be where all the features that I'd want to release are already in place and we're just testing and making sure that it doesn't break. Yeah. Alpha would be sort of still adding new stuff in. Okay. Not quite sure why. Maybe it's because of my Elgato sound. Let's go up here and change this. This is one last attempt to be able to hear if I'm if Brit, Sasho, or John Fly is tugging me. <laughs> All right. I'm assuming at this point it wants me to release my parking brake. But then again, it probably wants that inside release. Here. No, he actually wants you to set the parking brake. Okay. So you'll want to depress the pedals and then apply and then it. And set that. Okay. So I'm gonna. So this is very important, guys. So you you gotta press the pedals down, and then turn that knob right there, and that will set the parking brake. Something to do with the the master cylinder. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And then you can remove the chocks if you have any. I don't think I see any right now. Oh, cool. You don't. Still not sure why the sounds aren't working here. The stuff that we should test before we go live. And the sad part is, is that's one of the highlights of this pl plane is the sound. So I've got to get that working. All right, he's putting the winching strap in place. Yeah, so then you want to release the parking brake, actually. So I can do that that way. Yeah. I'm getting live tug driver. He's it's working so far. Seems to be working, so that's cool. Yep. Unfortunately, one thing is that the tug was a little bit too tall, so the propeller went through the tug. Oh, okay. But uh, the real sort of uh, meat is going to be... <laughs> He's <laughs> going a little bit crazy, I can see. <laughs> Do a little dance. Live. Yeah, he's Tokyo drifting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Zine. I know, right? He's on fire. 
It's a drunk tuck driver, he says. Ashix, hello, having a bit of deja vu, yeah. Okay, so... It's, it, it, it's Ajo driving us, so... Uh, I'm just glad that we got out of the hangar, so now that we can we can put the, the, uh, the GPU out. All right, so let's come down here, and again, we're going to set the brakes. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Now I need to troubleshoot my sound while that guy's going. You, you want to deep. You make. You want to make sure you got the pedals pressed in. Yeah. And then you want to set the brakes. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah. There we go. He's already lowering you. Let's see here. I want to do this. Uh, open file location. Properties. DPI. See if I can get that sound going. Disconnect and go to hand signals. There we go. Neil, the you're asking about whether there's going to be an automatic a a livery generator, I guess, in this like in the Kodiak. Probably not. Um, Personally, I don't think that there's much use for the auto-generated deliveries. So they're kind of a novelty. Some people might like them. I personally don't. I'd rather have a hand-painted delivery rather than something that is just like some preset panels where you can just change the color in a preset pattern. Because the paints on these airplanes can get pretty wild. So I'd rather like to give the give folks like Cessna Rocks and, and the various livery painters as much of a... I guess, Well, I mean basically give them the ability to do everything they need rather than trying to do their job for them that makes sense in a, poor, in a more poor fashion to be honest all right it looks like i got the the gpu out is um is that on by default then once yep. you toggle it okay yeah i mean you'd have to have sound in order to be able to hear it but you it would you'll hear you'll hear the engine spinning up in, in the gpu okay I think I got this sound squared away, but I think I'd have to restart x -Plane, so we may have to do a, just a something without the sounds, and then we'll come back and we'll do the sounds. Or I can restart. Sure. Uh, really up to you. It's your stream. I'm just here to, to talk to you about how to fly the airplane. Yeah, the, I wish X-Plane would allow you to dynamically change that sound. We'll do it without sound for the time being, because we're in tutorial mode and then we'll show off the sounds must have the PT uh oh Josh is chiming in <laughs> all right we'll do as he says I'm hoping though that that the restart actually works uh, sound 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 sounds okay fine hope this works should work I mean I can hear Yeah. All right. Well, in theory, hang on. Um, oh, too if late. If you're ready, oh, no worries. Because the way that the sounds work in the uh, in the TBM is that the since the airplane itself generates all the sounds and it generates its own sound context, in theory, all you would have to do is actually just reload the airplane or switch to another plane and then back to the TBM. Oh, and it okay. should reconnect to the current, sort of the default operating system, sound output system. Okay. I sure hope this works. It's interesting when you're, because I have a streaming PC, so the sound from the simulator has to go through a Elgato sound capture software over the HDMI cable into the capture card on the other PC, and so it's it's there's a balance. It's not just like your default sound card set up but yeah but from the streaming pieces point of view it's it's sort of the what you have set as the default communication device so what the simulator sends its sounds by default too yeah. i don't know if if you've got a more complicated pipeline past that um yeah you know, I, I don't know we'll see yeah we'll find out if we'll see what happens i am i let's put it this way when i adjust the windows volume down below where 
I'm able to hear it. I'm, that, I'm assuming that you guys can hear it. And the fact that you can, I can hear Todoriko and you guys can hear Todoriko. I think that part of it is working because the 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 Discord uh, that I'm on with you is on the same simulation PC. So, is, yeah, I think this might work. Just have to be patient. Beers on the checklist. Right click fried rice and bloody marys all the way. <laughs> yep. Right click. That's a little inside PMDG joke. They're making they're poking fun at me. Unfortunately, in the PMDG seven three seven NGX Totorico, I have to in order to move the light switches in the opposite direction instead of just a scroll wheel. I have to actually mm -hmm. use a left click and a right click to go back and forth. On so some... it's left click in one direction and right click in the other. Yeah. Like on a like on a uh, uh, taxi light. Yep. Bummer. Stream hard. <laughs> All right, please tell me I have sounds now. All right, so here's a test. You guys, uh oh. The plane just moved. That's weird. I'm assuming you guys are hearing that. Okay. Let's see if we can hear... Hopefully we hear the GPU. One more check of the sounds here. Sound. I think yeah. it collapsed the landing gear or something. Um, okay. Can you try and go to the maintenance manager and check the landing gear? Make sure it's... Yeah, it did. That's uh, that's fifteen grand because we're not going to repair. We're going to replace because we're snobs. Uh, left gear leg twenty five grand. Right gear leg twenty five grand. And I think the reason that it did collapse the landing gear is because my SciTech panel gear up gear down handle happened to be like literally a centimeter up from down. And that was probably my bad. No, it's, well that's weird. Well, it shouldn't be doing that, but um, strange. All right, so the, the, you guys are getting a little glimpse of the maintenance menu. We'll take a look at that over time as I break things. All right. Can you try and hop hey, into another airplane think, and back? I think I hear GPU sounds. I do. I'm so happy. I hear GPU sounds. I'm assuming that... The airplane... I think the airplane oh, is still look sitting at on the ground. Try You're right. And, uh, You're right. Jump into another thing. <sighs> Yeah, you're right. It's it's on the ground. So, should we reload the aircraft? <laughs> um, try and jump into uh, try and jump into like a 172 and then back into the TBM. Okay. 172. Mm. It's strange that it would collapse the landing gear. It shouldn't have, but I uh, literally that think that was my SciTech panels coming into play. Um, it might have been, but I. Th think there may be a little bit of a problem there with the stability of the physics initially when the simulator starts up and x-plane does a couple of weird things when sort of in the initial like first 10 seconds so uh for certain systems there are basically have to ignore things like over temps and overloads for the first 10 seconds after the simulator loads the airplane up Okay, so what what sounds would the um, would the GPU be related to? Would that be environmental, or would that be? Um, they're interior? all grouped into exterior and interior. Okay. Normally, I don't have this loud, but okay. So on the outside of the plane, you guys, if I do like a shift six. You guys will be able to hear the GPU. GPU yeah, just better. come close to the airplane, and then you'll be able to hear it pretty good. Yeah, there's the GPU all nice and loud. Okay. Okay. All right, GPU started. Gear is up. I'm assuming we're all fixed. Yep. Cool. Um, so, the so on the outer, overhead to start the airplane up, you want to go to the Take the red and black crash bar, is what it's called, and pu push that up. 
So just grab it and push it up. Okay. We probably have a 10 second or 15 second delay, don't we? Yep. Okay. So then you can take the electrical source selector and put that into battery into GPU. So you'll basically be clicking it twice up. It's not a click and drag. It's just a click click in the direction you want it to go. Okay. All the switches work that way. Up to GPU. Perfect. Oh, initializing and system. Oh, I like it. You'll want to wait for the screens all to finish starting up. Thanks, Josh, for encouraging me to restart. I think that's value right there. Patience, Padawans, right? Okay. Yep. It'll do a couple of dings at you and tests and all that stuff. And with uh, that all out of the way, you'll want to... All right, so you won't want to start programming in your... I mean, we're on GPU, so there's no hurry to get the airplane started up. Mm -hmm. So you, if you know what your route is going to be, you can start programming that in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I, I'm basically going to take off from Albuquerque, and I'm just going to fly out to a couple of VORs, and then I'm going to come back and shoot an approach into Albuquerque. Right. So do you even want to fly like a... Um, a, f a flight plan that you want to program into the G1000 sure. or do you just want yeah. to fly raw data? No, I'll, I'll put in a couple of waypoints and then um, uh, yeah, let's do, I'll do, I'll just do I'll go to the IFR low chart um, I'm going to take off and we'll just head up to the Santa Fe VOR which is about uh, 37 miles and then after that we'll go to the auto VOR and then we'll mm -hmm. shoot an approach. So I'll come down to the uh, yeah. Come down here, so and I can feel do. Feel free to cancel the uh, master caution and master warnings. Okay, master caution, master warning. All right, and then I'll click on flight plan. Flight plan, which is going to be down here. And then I'm going to go to menu and I'm going to delete the, old, delete flight the plan. old flight plan and enter. All right. And then on the next one, scroll down there and the uh, Santa Fe VOR is SAF. So I'm going to scroll. Yes. So I, I think I heard you correctly that you're trying to get it so the keypad will work possibly in yes. the future. That'll be awesome. Yes. Um, I do have a tentative promise by Philip from Laminar to get all the buttons there working, including backspace, space, and all the numerical keys and all that. Nice, nice. So now I'm going to put in auto. And so auto's VOR is OTO, so... I tried to do it on the keypad. That's funny. Oh. Now, I'm under the assumption that if I built a flight plan, say, on um, Simbrief or otherwise, that I could just incorporate that flight, the FMS, into here, and it'll be fine? Yes. If you okay. just drop it into the explain flight plans, you'll be able to see that okay. if you go, once you're done entering a, a waypoint there, you can just, if you push the end the cursor button again, so the cursor goes away. Mm -hmm. Let me just put in one more little, point here. Yeah, and scroll the small scrolling knob over once to the right. It'll bring up a list of stored flight plans for you. And all those are all the flight plans that x found on your disk in the flight plans folder in the app, output flight plans, as, as I think, yeah, okay. where it stores, yeah. stores those. I do that. I do that little trick a lot because I hate putting in tech roots manually. Hello, C206 yep. Station Air, Bear Bass. Uh, yeah, this is a modded. Yeah, this is a modded G1000 from Laminar for sure. All right. Uh, so I got auto in there. Okay, so I have a question. Do you think that if I do you think I should put KABQ as the last point or yes. will it recognize that I'm going to do procedures back to Albuquerque? 
it will be on. best if you put it in as another point. Okay. We got to subscribe. Remix reviews with the subscribe. Welcome to the Snack Shack. All right, I'm going to put in KABQ then. Now, in theory, I could also do the nearest airport. That would also work. Yep, nearest would also work. I'm almost there. Uh, you can do that on the PFT. Okay. Okay, ABQ, enter. All right, so that will allow us to put in a procedure at some point. Okay, flight plan is in. If you wanted to bump the sound up a bit, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I can do that for you, although it's going to get really loud here in a bit. You wanted to bump up the sound of Totorico or the plane? I both. think he means the plane. I I'm pretty loud already. <laughs> All right. Plane's going up. It's not really much sound in the plane right now, though, to be honest. Okay. That's yeah, just the avionics fans at this point. Yeah. Okay. All righty. All right. So we're pretty much set here. Um, you want to do one more thing, jump out of the flight plan page so that you're in the top level menu on the MFD or okay. top level screen on the MFD. And you'll want to put in your landing field elevation. So at the bottom of the menu, of the menu bar there, and you'll, you're going to have two keys. Um, yeah. So, um, there's a little bit of a bug here at this point, uh, which I need to resolve, and I'm going to resolve that uh, with a little bit of help from Philip from Laminar. Uh, if uh, there's uh, the bottom bar, just kind of got lost in respect to what the rest of the MFD was doing. So just to the left of the backspace key on the keypad there, there's a little hidden uh, click spot on the little screw there. Okay. Just click that so that the the menu bar gets into a normal state again. Oh, nice. Okay, so that that restored right there. If I click it again, yep. does it take it away? No, it okay. just resets okay. it to the sort of the read state. Okay. Um, there's some, there's a fair amount of hackery going on where tr I'm trying to determine exactly what sort of page the MFD is showing to you. Okay. And I've convinced Philip to put in a more explicit way for me to determine that using the MFD, but it's not out so far and I explained. So okay. uh, I had to use the hacky method so far. Okay. So anyway, uh, for the landing field elevation, the LFE, uh, you have two ways of entering it. You can either enter it if, if you're not flying with a flight plan or if the destination field is not in the database. So like you're flying to some sort of a, um, yeah, uh, you're flying to some sort of a uncharted airport, like some little grass strip or something, uh, which might not be in your database. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll want to enter in the manual LFE. So if you hit manual LFE, then it'll let you um, manually type in the field elevation in increments of 250 and 25 feet. Mm. And you can either accept or uh, reject that change. And the LFE, uh, the landing field elevation, is visible on the uh, on the ICAS strip uh, right under a cabin pressure section. So it'll say LFE FT. And then if you change the value, if you click the plus or minus 250 or 25 feet, then it'll change that value. Oh, I see right here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm hitting plus 250, 500 LFE feet yep. right there. Okay. Yeah. And this is and for that, something that's not in the database. Okay. Yes, this is in case you don't have it in the data, database or you want to do something like completely, completely different. Uh, like, for instance, you've changed your mind. I don't know, you're flying without a flight plan, uh, which okay. is also a valid way to go. So if you're happy with the... Ch if, you're, if you want to cancel that, you can just, on the very right side, there's a back button. So that'll cancel anything that you've okay. typed in, in there. Okay. And if you just want to pick up the landing field elevation from the flight plan that you have currently entered, just hit the uh, the FMS LFE button, and it'll grab the field elevation from oh, your last that's destination so airport. convenient. 354 for Albuquerque. Oh, very nice. Okay. And that then controls your pressurization schedule such that when you arrive at your destination, you're going to be at the right elevation in the cabin pressure and the airplane's going to depressurize correctly. Okay. Makes sense. So, uh, okay. It's not too often that I go to a, a, an airfield that's not in the database, but it could be, it could, it could happen. Especially with uh, an, actually, one engine out. 
<laughs> Ashix, you're not even going to have to use a hidden click spot or something. Um, once I have the, ner the necessary commands to enter uh, direct alphanumeric data into the FMS there, you're just going to be able to use either the clicking on the uh, 3D click spot on the 3D cockpit, or I'm going to make a little 2D pop-up of the keypad so you can enter it a little bit more quickly or even use your keyboard. So that's going to be uh, much more straightforward, I think. Alrighty, so we have our um, route, we have our destination. Do we have enough fuel? Um, I don't think it's a very long route, is it? Uh, if you bring up the flight plan. It's, I got a subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Chief Lynn. The flight plan total miles. Um, if I go S-A-F-O-T-O -O, and then back to K-A-B-Q. Uh... It's going to be approximately 110 miles if we shoot a full ILS approach. Yeah, yeah so that's basically nothing. Um, so we got in, we got plenty of fuel for that. 74 each side, okay. Yeah, I mean, the thing, even at the super highest power setting, you're only burning about, I don't know, 90 gallons an hour. So okay. um, we're going to have plenty of fuel, even with reserves to get back. Alrighty, uh, I don't think you have too much payload on, do you? Um, you want to fly with just what you have in the airplane right now? In terms of payload. Uh, show so, me where I would go to add the payload. It, it's in the normal X-Plane menu so far. Oh, okay. So, weight and balance. Yep. Pay payload, 427 pounds. Uh, it, would that be passengers and cargo? Or yes. luggage or whatever? Yep. All right, so that would be about two people with plenty of luggage each. That's fine. Yep. I might just bring up the fuel just a tad. Okay. Up to you. I mean, the thing will fly with up to 7,400. Um, okay. Yeah, 7,400 pounds of okay. total weight. That is set. Now, just because I, I know people are going to ask this question, could you give a brief ex explanation as to why the, the uh, presently um, the, the screens do not have the 3D pop-out function? Right, so, uh, and I'm not really sure they're going to ha ever have the full functionality. For and this has that. to do with the customization that you've done, right? Yes, okay. uh, so because uh, because the, the screens, as they come from Laminar, the G1000 is sort of optimized for the version that's in the Cessna 172. Um, the side screen, uh, sort of the, 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 the engine educations are customized to, like, it. A, a sort of generic garment look-alike, but they don't actually look and behave like in the real TBM. Mm. So, for instance, the data being shown on the laminar screens um, basically derives the values directly from sort of the indications that are in the in Explain, the status of the systems that are in Explain, but there's a whole bunch of uh, custom simulation of the systems that that's going on outside of ex outside of the systems of explain so what we do here the tbm has a completely custom pressurization logic um it has a a whole bunch of modifications to the engine model that are being applied in real time and those make the the stock displays and the engine indications behave really weirdly you have you have mm -hmm. like uh, maximum temperatures going up and down and the uh, prop rpm limits changing randomly because there's a lot of modification that the system, that the AV, but that the simulation does to the explain engine model to get all the proper temperatures and pressures and all the accelerations of the engine and fuel burns and all that mm. going on, and okay. that cannot cannot be done. It cannot be statically defined in the flight model just in Plane Maker. It has to be dynamically adjusted while the airplane is flying and while the simulation is running. Okay. So I I call it that I'm sort of twisting the arm of explain to get it to behave correctly mm. okay so uh so there's something that would have to come down the pipe later uh for cockpit yeah, they, builders they, yeah uh, i would have yeah i'd yeah. have to have laminar would have to actually provide some sort of api for me to draw into the screens the way it works right now is that these custom menu screens and menu buttons and all uh, the whole icast system are sort of overlaid just like a fraction of a millimeter on top of the explain screen 
in order to get it to look like it's displayed on the same screen, even though it really isn't. But it's could you a make it a so your your overlay pops out itself by itself alone, just the cabin yes, pressure, that, electrical trim, etc. Yes, that, e yeah, that's that's not a problem. I mean, okay. for cockpit builders, we could probably swing some sort of a method where they themselves overlay the windows in the correct yeah. position in which case it will probably work right yeah okay so yeah i, I can make it easily so that they'll pop out into separate screens that's not really okay. a problem all right thanks for the the description there okay moving let's move on to the next item right so let's get the engine started i mean we as a general sort of pre-flight check you'd want to basically make sure that well, even before powering up the airplane, you want to check, you know, got your landing gear lever down and flaps up because they're electrics. As soon as you would apply your electricity to the airplane, they start moving. Mm. And uh, you want to make sure that you've got all your icing switches off. Um, if you want to do a, a lights test, the lights test uh, button is on the icing panel there underneath the icing switches. Um, so you'll push that in and just look around the cockpit, make sure that all the lighty lights are lighting up correctly. Okay, I'm gonna press that now. Oh yeah, okay, so it's a hold down, okay. Yeah, it's now, a hold down. So I'm about to zoom out. There's no lights up top really, per se. Yeah, there isn't. Uh, it's uh, okay, just the audio panels, all right. the autopilot panel, and the other audio panel. The back lights, so these are, these are basically just the indication lights. Uh, the backlights for the in instrument uh, this, for the instrument panel, so the backlit text, mm -hmm. is being controlled on the overhead. Uh, there's a panel knob labeled. It's on the left-hand side of the overhead. In, in oh, a section of the overhead. Int yes, of the, of the overhead. In, in a panel okay. called Int yep. Lights. All right. Yep, I see that. So I can change. And it goes... It actually goes in a counterclockwise motion because this airplane was designed by some people who thought that that, that would make sense. <laughs> Le French, right? Yep. Yep. It, you you it were very French, diplomatic yes. with your your choosing of words there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bright. I like bright. Um, yeah. I, I mean, the you can you can either drag it or scroll it with the scroll wheel, and uh, it allows you intermediate positions, and it, up to about two thirds of the way, it only lights up the backlight, and the rest of the way, it also brings in the uh, panel from the glare shield, which it normally illuminates, sort of do a little bit of a panel flood. Right now, obviously, you're not going to be able to see the panel flood during the day. Yeah. Um, so that's all taken care of. Uh, if you want to be a good citizen, you'd probably turn on before engine starting. You'd probably also turn on the nav light. Uh, okay. Make sure that everybody knows. I mean, there's a GPS that they know. Yes. Okay. And uh, I think the C the TBM checklist also specify the strobe light as the anti collision, but it is not strictly necessary. I mean, you're in day daylight and it's fine. Strobe lights on. So, yep. It is not strictly necessary, but some people use it as an additional sort of warning that you're about to move the engine. So yeah. with that, all I. Th out thank, of the way. thank you, Chief Lin, for the subscribe. This uh, this engine is uh, this engine startup procedure is brought to you by Chief Lin, and it's eight months. Thank you, sir. All right. I'm sorry for ch yeah, yeah talking over. No, you're fine. You can't hear it because you're on the the delay there. But yeah, go ahead. All righty. Uh, so the engine startup is pretty simple. Uh, you already know how the throttle quadrant works. But basically, you want to keep it on the, uh, in the lower right-hand part. You want to get, basically keep it all the way back uh, in the cutoff position. You don't want to be introducing fuel as soon as the engine runs, so you want to keep it in the cutoff okay. until the engine reaches minimum starting RPM. Okay, that's uh, 13%. Neil, the T TBM does not actually have a separate beacon. I mean, it does have red anti-collision lights that automatically come on as soon as the airplane is powered up uh, but it does not have a separate beacon switch yeah welcome 505 assassin yep ABQ Mr. X okay so we if you want to do the, the engine start correctly you want to make it uh, you want to run a, a timer with it make sure that the engine is accelerating correctly uh, the timer is can be found on the PFD. 
uh, the third soft key from the right says TMR slash ref timer reference. If you push that, it'll bring up a little timer uh, box. Okay, what's up? And there you, you'll be able to start the uh, timer either with the enter key or it's also on a yoke uh, on the right hand horn labeled timer. There's a button for that as well, and it does the same. Just uh, starts, okay. stops, and resets the timer. Okay, so I'm going to hit that when I'm getting ready to start, I'm assuming. Yep. Okay. I don't need so to hit it now, you, then. Okay. Not just yet. <laughs> uh, so on the overhead, you want to make sure a couple things. So, I mean, first you want to make sure you've got the fuel supply on, which is on the back of the throttle quadrum pedestal. It's currently not textured. I'm going to put that in, uh, in the next revision. So you want to make sure that it's either selected on the, on the left or right tank, uh, which whichever you want to be running. Okay. Looks like it's on the right. If the right is on the yep. right. Yeah. Okay. It's uh it's either uh on the top right or top left. If the the uh if the selector is vertical, that means it's off fuel off. So you okay. want to select. How do you one get it the to the vertical? Tank. There's only. Uh, nice... you, there's a little click spot at the bottom. If you actually, at if you want bottom, to see the okay. click spot, if you want to see oh, all the yep, click there spots. It is. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. I got it now. All right. So now we're on the right tank. Okay. Yep. If you want to see all the click spots, it's fairly easy. Just go in and explain to view and show instrument click regions, and that will show you where all the little hidden spots are. Where instrument dis click regions? Okay. Oh. Jeez. I never. I never noticed that before. It's pretty useful, isn't it? That we're in Yoda mode. That's Yoda mode right there. That's nice. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. I, I'm able to so, find more Easter eggs now. Okay. Uh, it, it does help, I guess, with the Easter <laughs> eggs. <laughs> hey, Boom Sawa. Good to see you. Yeah, this is a 900, Richie. Yep. Thanks, Josh. Sorry I'm not being uh, as attentive to chat as normal. Thank you guys for, for being here. I appreciate it. Okay. Yep, Josh. Josh is super happy about being able to move all the breakers and break all the air, all the airplane. <laughs> yep. Uh, and Neil, yes, the fuel tank auto switch. As soon as the airplane started up, I'm going to have John turn on the automatic fuel selector. Okay. So on the overhead, you want to position the uh, ignition switch into auto, which would be the center position. All right, auto. And then you'll want to position the aux BP just to the right of it. There's a mm -hmm. sec there's another switch called aux BP. You'll want to put that into on for on. the engine start. Okay. That's the auxiliary electric boost pump. Okay, auxiliary yeah. boost pump on. Yep, and you'll hear it wind up. Mm -hmm. So with that all ready to go, uh, we've got the boost pump on. We got the ignition set to auto, which will make it fire as soon as the start is applied. So now you'll want to go to the Memorize where the starter switch is. Right now it's centered. It's spring-loaded to center. In so order to start the engine, you just hold it up for two seconds. All right. After I so start, start the timer, hold for two yep. seconds, and then we're going to be yep. immediately back down to the to the throttle yep. quadr quadrant looking at the uh, engine parameters, okay? Exactly. And I'm going to be looking for 13% uh, on the NG, right? Yes. And on okay. the cast messages, you should see starter and ignition. Okay. All right. So. Go for it. Ooh, I'm scared. All right. Clicking the timer now. Coming up here to start. Holding her one, two seconds. Coming back down to the PFD or the throttle quadrant. I need to raise this up and look for 13%. It's a little bit past it. Oh, it didn't move. That's fine. Oh, throttle quadrant's not moving. Just pull it and yank it forward. Yeah, with the mouse. Okay. It's going to be a hot start, isn't it? No, don't worry. Oh, okay. And just, uh, just pull it down, not quite as far. You want to keep it in the low idle. So my question is, is why is my throttle not working? That's weird. That's all part of the simulation. That's <laughs> fine. Oh, I think I cut it off accidentally. Oh uh, yeah, you you blew it up. Yes. Uh, you put it in. You, okay, so put it back into cutoff. Uh, so there's 
case down. It wasn't and quiet and cut off, but it turned off. Or maybe it wasn't cut off. Okay. No, it, it that's because you blew it up. Okay. So this is a great opportunity for me to come into the aircraft manager. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can go into the... Yeah, Josh is correct. Uh, we just blown up a couple of hundred thousand. I don't know if we did that much, though. There's no smoke, so I, don't, I have faith that it's not as much. It, it's... Yeah, it, it is done. Okay, so how come... Okay, so I'm clicking on the aircraft manager. It's not coming up. Is that... Really? Did we it break should. it really that uh, bad? No, no, no. It should. If you hover your mouse over the, the little window there, over the edge of the window, it should bring it up. Yeah, it, it brings up the menu, but it's not, it's not... I click on it to bring up the aircraft manager, but it's not bringing it up. Oh, it's strange. Truck's coming um, off. Maybe it wants to... Hmm. You sure you didn't move the window over some I, I place? Can, I can toggle the GPU. Oh yeah, you guys can't see it because I got this resolution going on over here. Hold on. Let me see if I can move this. That might be a little bit better. Just one second. Uh, you, are you sure it's not like positioned someplace at the edge of the screen or something? No, I'll show you. So now you can see it off to the side of me. So I can bring up the GPU and the and the chalks, and I can click off and on the GPU and the chalks. Mm -hmm. But I but the G, the aircraft manager is in green, but it's not yeah, it, showing. So do you think it's somewhere? It, else? You know, if you click if you click the button, it should bring up the window. Yeah, it's not. Weird. Hmm. All right. Um, little trick here to get the airplane reset into a, a. Let me see. Let me think. Well, I mean, we've still got our flight plan in, so that's all good. Um, one way to quickly resolve this, if you tr get just go to. I think it should work. If you just go to uh, explain failures and reset all failures. Um, it should basically reset the failure of the engine. Or fix all system or systems or what it's called. Yeah. Probably fixed it, but the manager's not coming up still. But Yeah, we'll, we'll get that sorted later. Okay. It's probably just the window stuck somewhere at the edge, at the edge of some screen or something. Could be, yeah. We're just not seeing it. Alrighty. Um, so uh, the cast messages are looking fine now. And so let's go back down to the throttle quadrant and we'll, we'll talk about that again. <laughs> okay. And cut off. Figure out what. Yep. Uh, you can't. Reset the timer, but leave everything else uh, the yeah. way it is now. So I'm going to have a little chat here. Okay. Uh, the reason why your physical throttle does not move this is because uh, your physical throttle is... I have it set up in such a way that you're only controlling it in the physical throttle, with your physical throttle, once the uh, virtual throttle is over on the left side of the H there, the H pattern. So you basically have to be in the normal mode. When you're in the right-hand side, when the throttle is on the right-hand side, it's what's called in the condition mode. At that point, your throttle, sort of the engine speed, is set to idle. Just idle and that's all. The Whether that point is, what you're doing is you're controlling fuel flow with the throttle. There's only three detents, really. There's cutoff, low idle, high idle. Mm -hmm. When you start the engine, when you're Shut, when you're shutting down the engine, you want to be in cutoff. When you want to start the engine, you go to low idle to run the en to, and to transition into flight mode. You, you'll push it forward through high idle and then over to the left. So you can try that out now. It's you, you use you use the mouse, or you can bind a couple of keys to, keys to that as well. But you can use the mouse, and each time you flick the mouse, you got to let go and grab it again because it only moves at one detent at a time. It is basically designed on purpose to make it so that you cannot break it. You cannot accidentally pull it into the incorrect position. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's so whenever you want to introduce fuel, 
during an engine start, you only do one hop forward and that's it, and then let go. You don't you, you don't ever ever start a PT6 in high idle unless you want to have it blow up. All right, I'm going to start the timer and try this again. Sure. So timer start, come up to the overhead, starter up one, two, immediately come back down here, and look to enter reduce fuel at 12%. Up one. Oh, there we go. I think this might work. Yeah, it was still fairly flooded with fuel, but um, it survived it. Okay. Now the the ITT rise that you had there was really really fast. It should normally come up much slower. Um, that's because from the previous start when you were have when you blew up the engine and the the basically it extinguished a fire, it was still injecting fuel because the engine was still spinning. So basically you had a bunch of pooled up fuel in the engine. The that, normal way after that's amazing fail, that you have that persistence coded in there because we did a fix all systems. Normally a plane would reset to, oh, there's no fuel left over. We're all good, but you have it so it's real life right yeah, there. That, that's because that's part of the custom engine model that is, yeah. not, is not affected by that fix all systems button. So uh, normally what you would do after a failed engine start is you would run a engine clearing procedure where you would take the igniters and the fleet fuel pump off. You would keep the 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 fuel control and cut off and just run the starter for like 30 or 60 seconds, and just let it basically run through the full one minute cycle of the starter without lighting the engine up. You just want to basically spin the turbine and spin the compressor to just pull a bunch of fresh air through the through the engine and, and pull out all the fuel vapors. Okay. Alrighty, so with the yep, exactly, Grau. Uh, yeah, it basically it, it sprays. So the problem. For uh, Grau, that's fine. The the auxiliary boost pump can be left on for extended amounts of time, but the problem basically was the the aux boost pump. If you, John, if you bring up on the MFD, there's a little fuel page uh, on the bottom of on, on the menu bar. If you click fuel, it'll show the okay. uh, if you show the the diagram of the fuel system. Uh, basically, the auxiliary boost pump is a small low pressure electric pump that provides additional fuel pressure to the engine's uh, engine drone pump in case the engine drone pump fails during start that's when you would normally have the auxiliary boost pump take over so you don't get a hot start um, or the engine drone fuel pump is not providing enough pressure after the engine is started you would position the aux boost pump switch to auto which would turn it off and only make it turn on in case the engine drone pump is not providing enough pressure uh, the uh, if you don't have if you have the engine drum, I'm sorry if you have the aux boost pump running and the fuel control and cutoff the only thing that it does is it's trying to push fuel into a closed fuel valve and does nothing basically it just stays there um, same thing with the with the mechanical engine drum pump which is your normal the one that you normally run on that's the white one on the diagram there um, the problem basically is with the fuel pooling problem is that the if you put the fuel control and in, in the condition lever and the and the, in the your thro throttle lever if you put that up into low or high idle you open the low pressure i'm sorry you open the high pressure fuel valve and since the mechanical fuel pump is engine driven as soon as the engine starts spinning the mechanical fuel pump is going to try pumping fuel into the into the engine so there's going to be a little trickle of fuel slowly going out through the uh, injectors, um, not the injectors, the fuel nozzles uh, entering the combustor, even though it's too early for it to start burning fuel. So you basically get a, get a flash off of fuel. Mm. Uh, so that's why, even, even when the engine is not running, if it is for every reason, for whatever reason spinning, you want to be keeping the, the, your condition lever in uh, cut off. And if after you've reached starting RPM, you put the condition lever into like low idle or something, and the engine doesn't light after 10 seconds, which can happen if the 
uh, fuel control is a little bit quirky if it doesn't provide a, a correct flow mm -hmm. or the fuel nozzles are, are clogged or something uh, you want to position the fuel control and cut off and you want to turn off the igniters turn off the, the additional boost pump and you just want to push as much fresh air through the engine to pull out any extra vapor or any extra fuel puddle that was there and clear it all out I'm gonna okay, have to so that was okay go ahead Sorry, that was a little bit of a long-winded explanation, but uh, basically what you can do at this point, you can go to the overhead and uh, you'll want to position the aux boost pump switch into auto. Okay, done. And then we want to look at our cast messages and we want to start start clearing them off. Okay, so stall heat uh, would be so down stall here. Heat. Yes, uh, those heat. are... Here. Yeah, those are normally used uh, after the engine started, or, or for example, I mean, sometimes you would keep them off uh, while taxiing to uh, avoid heating the stall, uh, the pitot tubes while you're still on the ground. But it, it can also work as a, as a reminder for you. Okay, I'm um, gonna turn the generator to main. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Generator, generator main, main and the GPU switch to battery. I'm sorry, the source switch to battery. Source switch to battery. Okay, and then I'm going to do fuel auto select on. And the only thing left is the GPU, which I can just disconnect. Yes. Tells you that the GPU door is open because somebody has a GPU attached. And Neil, to your question, uh, no, the 900 doesn't have a a torque increase because it's always running at the full rated power of the full rated power of the airplane so this the 850 had a 700 and an 850 mode uh, which normally would only be permitted to take off in the 700 mode and you after takeoff you'd position the flap selector in past the gate to allow you to, to go into the full power the 850 horsepower mode TBM 900 runs at 850 horsepower from the get-go so you can get 850 for takeoff so the 100 <laughs> so the the 900 just is normally calibrated to 100 percent torque on the meter there 100 percent torque means you'll get it you'll give it a you're giving it full juice yeah mda pole has a good good point there this plane needs more detail damn it <laughs> uh i will oblige you don't worry <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. All right, Sushi, hello, how you doing? Uh, you're in Abu Dhabi right now, waiting to board a 777-300 to O'Hare. Oh, man. I hope that you're yeah, Josh, I hope that you're jump seat. Josh is correct. It's about 5K a blade on that. 5K a blade. Well, uh, I just, give me, just give me one blade. Just, I want one blade. Yeah. I'll be about as expensive as, I don't know, buying somebody like a really expensive necklace. You can just put a blade on <laughs> like a loop and just have your girl wear that, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Grau, it, it really, I mean, it's sort of, it's, I don't mean like 5,000 exactly. It's like in the thousands. So full labor set, and everything. Yeah. If the full set of uh, work uh, is going to cost you well north of 300K to replace the full turbine set on a PT6 on a large model PT6 to be exact because there's one additional turbine wheel there which adds another 50% to the cost versus a small model mm. yeah it is a rich man's plane exactly uh, well aviation generally is pretty expensive so uh, what else we can, to, we can do a generator check so if you see on the electrical section of the MFD right now it's showing two, bar, two bars there on the amps it's mm -hmm. showing battery, and it's showing a G there, which mm -hmm. is generator. Um, and gen should battery should be pre should be outside out of the yellow part, uh, which would be f below 50 amps of charge, because over 50 amps means your battery is very you know, quite a, quite a bit discharged. So generator right now is just providing 20 amps. Fine. Uh, we can check the standby generator called the standby alternator by positioning the generator switch on the overhead to uh, the standby position 
and then we'll come back down to this to this uh, MFD view and check that the G there has changed into an S then that is providing good uh, good amps and that the battery is not discharging. Looks so good. S is there and it's providing 20 amps and battery is not discharging. So that's fine. We can switch back to the main generator. That's a that's the check of the uh, standby alternator. Okay, so one more thing on the overhead is the AP trim section. Uh, that is your electric trim cutoff. So there's three positions. The off position is all electric trim is disabled, which means you're only going to have the mechanical trim wheel on the center pedestal for the elevator trim. AP off means electric trim's functioning, but autopilot disabled. And, it, and the full on uh, position gives you electric trim plus the autopilot is allowed to move the trim. Okay. Without, uh, in the AP off uh, position, you'll not, you're not going to be able to uh, have the autopilot be on. That is in case, you're going to use that position in case you have a runaway trim problem where the autopilot goes a little bit nuts and it tries, it tries to like trim your airplane into a crash or something like, like it happened to you on the Dash 8 um, on Pilot Edge, a famous <laughs> clip. Thank you. Thank you for yep. bringing that up. <laughs> I'm just yep. explaining how yeah, yeah, to, how yeah, to yeah. counter that. Yep, so exactly. here, you, what you would do is you would hold down the autopilot disconnect button on the yoke. That'll uh, prevent the autopilot from working. But in case there's a... And also kill out the autopilot trim. Uh, well, actually, it'll kill all trim. But in case you want to you wanna still use the electric trim, uh, the red button, the AP trim disc... Uh, in case you still want to have electric trim but you want to kill the autopilot because the autopilot is doing something crazy mm -hmm. then you would position that switch to AP off and you can let go of the button on the yoke so you can and still you trim but you're not on autopilot okay yep uh, the ELT uh, switch right now isn't simulated uh, I'll see about that in another at another point in the future yeah. Brett, so Brett, with Brett the, like, that all Brett likes your example uh, you know Remember when you crashed on pilot edge? You know, he didn't say you just crashed the dash. Then he had to put in the extra on pilot edge. <laughs> yep. Uh, I there's don't still know how I crashed them. There's still an investigation out there on that whole incident. I'd say that it was completely not your fault. I There was people that disagree with that, but I agree with you 100%. <laughs> Okay, so we'll make just just make sure that our trims are roughly centered. Uh, the airplane persists all your trim settings and all your flaps positions. So, uh, in order to take off, the takeoff position for flaps should be selected, and you'll basically want to have uh, your trim trims and the uh, the elevator in the takeoff hash mark, aileron centered, and the rudder will be either centered or a little bit off to the green hash mark on the rudder trim. The reason for that is the airplane has a lot of P factor. Uh, so as you rotate, it's going to have a tendency to, to yaw the airplane to the left. So mm. dependent, uh, that all depends on the weight. And you'll know that with experience. The, the heavier the airplane, the more powerful the P factor because you're going to have more angle of attack. Okay. Hello, Ding Driver. Uh, hello. Yeah, Brett Sands right. The, uh, what did the virtual NTSB? It's, they're still out. They're, they're deliberating. Squeezy, how you doing? Okay. All right. All right. Dang I will driver, set the airplane is still in development. So yeah, the rumor is on the street is spring or early summer, is possibly yep the mark. That's the word on yes. the street anyway. And the street is well, well, I guess they're about as close as they can be for being a the street. The street exactly. Okay. So with that all out of the way, since we've we're all started up and we're ready to go. Um, you can now move your throttle from low idle into high idle and then immediately into over the into the flight mode. And okay, you'll wait for the mode. propeller to Okay, and then you should it should unfeather the propeller and should stabilize at about twelve hundred RPM.
two hundred dollars well, in, in fuel burned so far. Yeah, two hundred fifty maybe. Yeah, and about three thousand, three hundred thousand in engine components. Well, we had no proof of that because we couldn't get into the maintenance manager. True. <laughs> um, so I, I I do stand corrected there. <laughs> um, so now just get used to how your throttle positions there. You'll notice that only about your throttle will only engage with the virtual one from about 40% of the length up. That's because the full throttle range on the airplane actually goes back into taxi and into reverse. So if you keep an eye on the phys on the virtual throttle as you move your physical one, you'll notice that it's not moving, it's not moving, and then it'll sort of resynchronize with yours. And then as you go back too far, you'll hear it sort of make a click and it'll stop tracking where your physical throttle is. Okay, but right, <clears throat> right now I have to... In order to get it to go into the power mode, I would just per keep pushing it forward? Yeah, keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward. Okay. And then at some point it'll start tracking you. All right, yep, yep, okay, cool. All right, I'll keep it in the taxi range, but yep, I see that now, okay. Okay, so right now you're not quite in the taxi range. Oh, really? You're in flight idle. Okay. Yeah, the, the taxi range is below where you are, where you are right now. Oh, okay. Uh, so in I'm order to get it into the ta okay, go ahead. Yeah, to, to get it into the taxi range, make sure that you've got your physical throttle close to where the virtual one is, so about center. And then you'll just hold down your button, whichever button you have bound to either reverse or beta. One of these functions, and as you hold it down, you'll see the little triggers there uh, below the throttle lift up. Oops. That's fine. Yeah, it, it didn't. You didn't do anything wrong. Uh, so it's fine. You can you can now move it forward and back. Oh Just yeah. Don't go. Don't there go too go. far into okay. the reverse. Okay. So there now it's tracking you. So the way that it works um, uh, is you there. You now back into the. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. Gotcha. So there's a little stop there, and, and that's what the click is, basically. That means you've hit the gate, and as soon as you lift up on the trigger, it pulls you back into where you have your physical throttle. Okay. And you can that le then let go of that button, of, the, of your uh, reverse uh, toggle or reverse whatever button, mm -hmm. and then you can move it freely in the beta range. So taxi is where you would normally be using the range roughly for taxiing. And it goes uh, back about another sort of length of the, of the shaft of the uh, uh, of the physical throttle of the virtual throttle, and then if you go even further back, you'll go it slowly start going into the reverse range. Okay. Um, the taxi range at the bottom of the tax taxi range, uh, it's even a little bit lower than I see it right now on stream. You'll have what's called the zero thrust point, so that's where if you let go of the brakes, the airplane will basically not move at all mm. and you can actually see it if you want to if you go to the explain settings go into data output and search for thrust you can put that out on your screen and you'll be able to see how much thrust the engine provides in real time and as you pull back you'll see it go back down to zero and then slowly go into negative as you, as you enter the reverse range just do engine thrust for data output just thrust. Okay. yeah just engine thrust yes Okay, 162 pounds right now. If I come down here, I'm gonna have to have a couple different quadrant views. I have a feeling there's gonna be 17 support calls just for that gate on on day on week one. <laughs> probably, probably. Oh yeah, I can see how yeah. the thrust is. I can take it back down to zero. I guess, huh? Yes. Which and is well within the you. reverse range. No, it, the, it's the, the sort depicted of centered, reverse range, anyway. Not quite. I mean, it's sort of centered with the stick there in the middle of the where the stick of the throttle goes into the into the throttle quadrant. Oh, there's minus. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can see how it's going down. Okay. So in theory, if I let go of the brakes, I'm near zero. I'm not going to move much. Okay. Yep. Planes are silent. You can't. You guys can hear a little bit of sound, can't you? Just a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, if you let go of the brakes now, feel free to do that. Uh, 
black magic upon your eyes. That's right, yep. This is the black magic plane. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so feel free to feel free to let go of the brakes and re uh, release the parking brake, and you should basically not move at this point. And play around with the throttle until you find the zero thrust point. If I have like four or five pounds of torque, it probably won't move either, huh? Uh, it won't probably move with even 50. Oh, okay, yep. It's not moving right now. That's nice. I like yep. that. And as you slowly push it forward, you'll see see it start creeping forward very, very slowly. Yeah, uh, even with 50, 50 pounds of thrust, it's not moving. So that's good to know. There... Yeah, it takes about 100. There's 130. Yep, okay. Yeehaw! Right, so basically when you're taxiing, you'll normally want to stay within this taxi range uh, and modulate your uh, engine thrust just within there. Alright. So, but this is a way to do like a slow, like for sometimes on pilot edge, when you're in a non-movement area and you just kind of want to reposition, 100, maybe 200 pounds of thrust is actually a good t way to maneuver around a non-movement area. Yeah, I'm, and the uh, the bottom of flight idle, by the way, on at sea level, would be about 500 pounds of thrust. You're up for fairly high. Albuquerque, Albuquerque is what, 5,000 feet or something? 5,500, yeah. Yeah, so there, the amount of thrust that you're getting in the taxi range is actually fairly reduced by about another maybe 20, 30 percent. At sea level, it'd be a little bit uh, even more willing to accelerate. And there, if all the way at the top of the taxi range or at the bottom of the flight idle, at the flight idle position, you'll be getting about 500 pounds of thrust, which easily will get you 40 knots of mm. ground speed. Plenty enough to taxi around, basically. More than enough. Uh, Canada, in Canada the, is excited about this plane, he says. Not southwest taxi speed, no. Oh, well, I mean... Uh, if you want to go really, really crazy fast, I mean, you can, of course, push it into the flight range. Just be prepared if you want to pull it back into uh, into zero thrust or into the taxi range. you got to push the gate. you got to lift up the trigger again to get back into it so that you get past the trigger. Oh, yeah. I forgot to ask how all our days are going and awkwardly saying, yeah, me too, and start taxiing. <laughs> like someone we know. Yeah. Oh. Wouldn't it be fun if we had Steve-O in the chat today? Okay, and you can do something like your flight controls check. And also set your takeoff trim. I'm sorry, not takeoff trim, sorry. I mean flaps. the takeoff flaps. Yep. Okay. Takeoff flaps are It's now on set. the ICAS. Yep. yep. On the MFD. Okay, uh, for the flight director you'll want to set your desired altitude, your desired heading, if you plan on using the flight director for takeoff, obviously. Yeah. Um, so probably runway heading or something. I wish it MDA pop, yes. Someday we'll get it to work with my SciTech panels. <laughs> yeah, we will. Alright, so I'm going to rotate the altitude knob. We're Neil, gonna... yes, you can, you're going to have to bind the button or key to that, and it's just uh, the command is the x -plane standard reverse toggle or beta toggle. So if you've already got reverse toggle bound, which most people do, then you don't have to do anything. It'll just work for this as well. MDA pot, yes, so we do plan on weather radar and TCAS. Actually, I'm working on EGPWS right now. I should have my taxi lights on. It's generally good practice, yes, but it's not required for daytime operations. All right, we're doing an intersection departure. Albuquerque Tower has told me to line up and wait. Well, in that case, you'll want to turn on your transponder probably as well. Yeah. Which is on the PFD. Yeah. 
Let's walk in altitude. All right, they told me to line up and wait. Okay. Uh, all right, um, I'm gonna set my parking brake, so I have to press my brakes down, and yes. then set the brake. Okay. And then you can let go of your brakes. Turn the landing light on. Turn. Uh, uh, you can either use the landing light or you can use the pulse system. Okay, I'll hit the pulse. And then so if you I go back to off on the landing the, light. So it's. Let me explain how this works. So there's okay. two light clusters in each wing. There's the taxi light cluster and the landing light cluster. Okay. The landing light cluster is much more powerful. Uh, and if the switch works in the following way, off means both clusters are off. Okay. Taxi means only the taxi light cluster is on. Okay. Landing means both the taxi and the landing light cluster are, are on. Okay. If you turn off the landing light cluster by either positioning the switch to taxi or to off, then if you turn on the pulse switch, then it'll pulse only the landing light part left to, left to right, left to right in about a one second interval. So if you look at it look at it from the outside, from the front, you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. So if you just put it on taxi, you'll be able to see that the airplane is sort of lit up on the tips of the wings. If you then turn it on to landing, you'll see that it's much brighter. So with that being okay. said, should you... Okay, so you have it right now set to off, the way I'm seeing it on the stream. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, that means that the landing and taxi portions are off, and the pulse system is just allowed to pulse o only the landing lights mm. uh, off and on again. So you'll basically be completely dark on one wing and completely lit up on the other wing, and it's just going to pulse left and right. Okay, so we'll go... Pulse and if you have off. it to landing, that overrides the pulse system, and it turns on both light clusters fully. If you put it into taxi and pulse, then it's going to turn on the taxi light portion, the cluster steady, and it's just going to pulse the landing light portion. Okay. All right. Pulse light is on. Taxi light is off. Landing lights are off. And... Okie doke. And so with that all out of the way, uh, we'll just make, make sure we've got no cast messages, so we're happy. Take off uh, everything flaps on the are overhead set. Hit. Yes, okay. uh, take off lap set, trim set. And we got our transponder squawk and altitude, so we've got lights, we've got camera, and let's just do the action. You want to ease the power up on until the prop reaches 2,000 RPM, and then you want to keep on advancing the power until you're about 95% torque. And of course, uh, wait. Sorry, how many RPMs again? Two thousand. It'll sit. There's only one band for the RPM. Okay, so two thousand set. Do you put a little? Then, do you, uh, I'm gonna. I had. I'm putting a little nose down trim in, just because it was not necessary. Oh, because it was, seemed like it was bopping. Ooh, the famous ground handling happening right now. Oh, snack. And keep advancing torque. Okay. Until you get about 95%. Alright. I'm having to firewall and it's only going to 89. I can rotate. Okay, rotate speed is 90 knots. Red I, went, sand, way, I uh, went way over that, but that's okay. Don't worry. Brett's and this question, what's the logic behind the pulse lights? Uh, it's basically a little feature designed to make the airplane more conspicuous during the day, because during the day, it's so bright that it's really hard to see the landing lights. So as you can see right now on stream, the blinking landing lights are much more obvious that it, uh, that it sort of catches your eye. Of course, uh, you would want to use, use that uh, yeah, you want to use that with care and caution because during the night it is, it is extremely annoying to have a pulsing pattern uh, on the runway in front of you or something like that. It, it will unnerve you. And so, as you've already got flaps up, so that's all good. Uh, best rate of climb speed is 124. Okay. We've already got Yacht Emperor on. That's cool. 
I didn't turn on the yaw damper. That must have been on by default. Hmm, interesting. Just playing now with the trim a little bit here. Oh yeah, she nice. Okay, I'm gonna sync up my heading bug. Oh wait, no, it didn't sync up until I go into. Oh, I clicked. I remember this. I click on the heading button. That's right. So click on, yep. come over here and click on that. That syncs up the heading bug. Yeah, and I need to bind the default. This uses a custom autopilot control panel, and I gotta bind up to kind of the default commands to it so that it works right. Altitude selected at 9,000. We're within 1,000 feet. I'm going to yeah, go we'll ahead go. and hit nav. And I'm also going to... Well, that's good for now. I'm going to redo my direct to. So I'm going to go to flight direct to... Yeah, you're going activate. in the opposite direction as far as I can tell. No, I'm turning towards Santa Fe. Okay, or, well, you're turning right now, yeah. Because when you were activating it on stream, you were actually oh. 180 degree opposite to that. Wow. Okay. So right now we just want to make sure that the airplane's uh, so the cabin is pressurizing as we climb through 10,000 feet. Let me look at that. And you're not quite at 10,000 just yet. Pressurization showing uh, in Yeah, the we green. have a differential. Yeah, basically we want to see that there's some differential pressure value and it's not going down or something. Okay. Alright, I can read a little bit of chat. Sorry guys that I, and gals I've been kind of avoiding. It. Yeah, the SciTech panels, uh, the radios probably work, but the the some of the multi-function panel doesn't work because of the some of the custom coding, but we'll probably get that going easily with. If I probably spend an hour or two with with Todoriko, he'll probably figure that out with maybe using uh, uh, one of the SciTech plugins that we have available. Well, I mean, no, I'm gonna, I'm going to make it so that you don't have to actually change anything on your end. I'm going to make modifications in the airplane so it picks up the default X plane command to do that. Oh, nice, nice. What is the top speed and cruising speed? He he asks. Uh, uh, okay, so top speed and cruise is 330 knots true airspeed. Um, your typical cruise would be about 320, 315 to 320, depending on load and temperature. Uh, basically, in order to get maximum lifetime out of the engine, you probably want to keep the ITT under 800 degrees C. If you don't care about ITT and you just want to go f as fast as possible, uh, you'll, uh, while well, still, of course, remaining within limits, You'll go to, uh, you'll go almost 330 knots true airspeed. Uh, you'll probably want to climb, John. I'm going to turn. Uh, I'm doing some. Fly. I'm doing some real okay. estate uh, uh, surveillance. Previews. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's it's basically possible to. It's designed to be possible to to fly at over 300 knots, whilst the, the on route fuel burn, um, depending on altitude, will be between 55 to 65 gallons per hour. So it's a little, I guess, personal little, super little fast prop. In fact, it is the fastest production. Uh, propeller, single engine propeller aircraft in the world. There are faster twins, but no singles. Another addition to Snack Air? Yeah. I wish I wish that FS Economy would put a 900 in there. Oh my gosh. What is it, what is it against them up, updating their database? I don't get it. I don't think they're, they have a problem with that, do they? I mean, the Kodiak is in there. Well, I asked them about the airports and getting rid of the old airports that don't exist anymore and the old codes. They have, mm -hmm. They're not going to do it. 
Uh, so the old codes I can under sort of understand because they are uh, they're trying to support FS two thousand four, mm. which did not really have the ability to update uh, the airport database. But why not force the people that are using FS two thousand four to upgrade? <laughs> Yes, I would think that, uh, uh, what is it, 14, 13 years down the line, they probably, well, when did the thing come, come out, actually? It came out probably in 2003 or something like that. Yeah. So, don't, get me, don't get me wrong, FSE, if you ever are listening to me. I doubt you are, but if you ever are, I love you. Trust me, I love you. <laughs> and I'm not the only person to, to be asking for an upgraded, upgraded database. But anyway, Avanti is the fastest twin, Petri Ron says. Yes, the Piaggio Avani is uh, the faster prop twin. Well, the c fastest civilian prop twin, to be exact. Uh, in fact, yep. it might just be the fastest twin. I think the uh, Tu-95, the Russian bomber, is fast. Is the fastest propeller aircraft in in use to date. Um, there was a couple that exper experimentals, like the XF, I think, 86. Thunder Screech, which was faster, but that was never actually a production aircraft, and that never entered service. It was just an experiment. That was the and the one that was like super duper loud, like beyond, like yeah. kill people's hearing. Yeah, it'll like shake your innards loose, loud. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fastest, I think, uh, full stop propeller airplane is the Tu-95, which I can look up. I mean. And that is not even any kind of a secret how they did it. They just stuck for the largest. Yeah, maximum speed is, let's see, that's 926 kph, which in uh, aviation terms would be 500 knots true airspeed. All right, so every, any, any organization that has a board of directors is not up for changes. That's probably true. The website hasn't been changed since 2004. Yeah. We love it, though. We love it. We just, you know. The, maybe the decision maker flies 2004. That could be. That could be. This is faster than an E-1000 with 1,200 horsepower, is the question? Um, so the E-1000, first of all, is not really in production. I mean, it's a paper plane, essentially. Uh, they've made, like, one prototype, and it's not being produced on the line. So you can't order. I mean, you can order any 1000, but it's just not going to get delivered anytime soon. Second of all, the E1000, uh, at least according to the documentation that I have, is not faster than the TBM. They're about the same, maybe within a split of like three or four knots. And third of all, the E1000, on paper, it has 1200 horsepower. But what they don't tell you is that it's running essentially the same engine as this thing. So the TBM and the E-1000 have almost the same engine. The difference is that the E-1000 has a variation of the uh, engine which is running, which has a more powerful gearbox. So it's able to sustain a higher mechanical load on the gearbox at lower altitudes. Um, and if you want to make that in the can it appear correctly in the cockpit, John, I, you'll I, want to I, make sure. I corrected it. I was trying to do I was trying to make, make it a make surprise. Font smaller. Oh yeah, I could do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so the E1000 is running essentially the same engine as this, um, but the only difference is that it can reach higher. Uh, horsepower at lower altitudes, but high altitudes, it is running at the same thermodynamic limit. Both engines have uh, a thermodynamic limit of 1,825 horsepower. So, so quick question. The only difference. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The only, you're, the, finish that thought. The only difference. So the only difference between this and the E1000 is that the E1000 can use more of the engine's available power at a lower altitude. But once you get above flight level 250, they're both the same. Okay. Um, so a quick question. Uh, why am I only able to get 79% on my torque? Um, I don't know. Uh, With my throttle. Is that a throttle? Yeah. 
Is that probably a... a Your physical throttle? Yeah, my, my Hotas is all the way forward. Now I can mouse it forward, additionally. Oh, maybe. right, I know, I know. Uh, it's because you've basically burned up the engine so badly that it's simulating a performance drop. Oh. So it's it, as you burn up the components, it's... Uh, it's reducing your power, your available power. But we repaired it. And uh, since oh. you have reached 100% wear, mm. uh, it, it will, normally what it does is it triggers, once it reaches 100% wear, it triggers a fatal failure in X-Plane. It basically makes your engine blow up. Okay. Now you've manually reset that, so you've re removed that X-Plane failure, so the engine is st still able to run, but the custom simulation of the engine performance wear is still putting in the performance cost for you so okay. you're at 70 so 79 percent at 2000 rpm would be what like uh oh at you're not at sea level you can't get away but from you, the flame up it keeps haunting you yes i know at sea level i'd say i mean you've probably you've probably dropped down to about 40 percent of power on the engine right. at this stage and and that, ma that, maximum that I'm assuming that maintenance menu is not available in flight. Not in flight. That would be sacrilegious in the Totorico world. Uh, B2 says yes. He's talking. Yeah, he's only drug runners change their registration numbers mid-flight. I know. <laughs> what would you believe? It? Would would you believe your eyes if ten thousand fireflies mucked up? Isn't that a song? That's a song. That's like an Owl City song. Can you, uh, Neil wants to know if you can turn off the engine wear. Well, you can go buy new parts. You can repair or replace parts when you're on the ground. I'm, I'm not currently uh, planning to have the engine wear model be optional. Uh, I will consider if many people request it. Um, not, not really certain about that because I mean, if you don't care about engine wear. Than, or about treating the airplane right, then probably this model is not, for, not you. for you. Now, let me just chime in on that. Okay, so what you're forcing I mean, people do, to do is learn a proper start. So you're forcing through the ability. You know, they can't turn off this functionality of it, you wearing things out, right? They've got to learn it. I will tell you right now, the majority of the people that fly the 727 from FlyJ Sim, they turn the maintenance off. So if you if you put that option in, there will be less people right. learning the proper procedure. I'm just saying. Right. You could bend the peer pressure. So, but um, I think. Well, I mean, part of the reason probably is could be. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if A2A has the ability to dis disable maintenance or wear in their planes. I've never seen anybody yeah, they do. do it. To be honest, they do. In, in the A2A menu, there's a damage off or damage on button. Gotcha. So, with uh, the 727, I think Jack's gone a little bit, gone and done it a little bit incorrectly, because um, oh. in the 727, the maintenance intervals are extremely short. It's only like 60 hours on the engines, which is laughably short. Oh, be careful. Uh, this be, dip be diplomatic, man. We have a lot of FlyJ Shim chairs here in, in, the, in the chat badges. <laughs> okay, let, let, me, let me rephrase that. Um, now, I don't mean laughably as in what he did is wrong. Um, for the simism aspect of it, so that you can actually do some kind of maintenance, it ha it makes all the sense. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm fully granting that. What I think is why it's annoying people is that they get to do they have to do it too often. In this airplane, if you don't maintain it, um, it you'll have to go for hundreds and hundreds of hours before anything starts to deteriorate. If you don't overstress it and you don't treat it wrong like you, you know, like you did during the startup where you just burned the engine up, uh, if you don't treat it incorrect, if you don't treat it wrong, uh, the airplane uh, will run for, most of the components will run easily for 1,500, 2,500 hours, no problems. The only thing that is kind of short term is engine oil. Uh, so I do plan on having an option to make the wear shorter but if you run realistic wear an, aim, an airplane given uh, timing delays or given 
uh, sort of the, the amount of time that most people fly in it is never they're not gonna, never going to hit any sort of uh, wire limitations on an airplane. You can also change the font in the cockpit so it fits in the little registration label there. Size in cockpit, okay. Oh, not 590, 50. Ha ha ha. Hello, Steve99. Uh, what experience do you have? I maintain my A2A Cessna to perfection. I turn my damage off all the time. I don't know why. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. Well, the, the A2As are also extremely touchy about that. Um, they are much more sensitive to real wear than a real airplane would be. They're sort of meant as a, I don't know, another kind of simism thing. Or they're trying to get you to do some kind of maintenance if you have it turned on, because otherwise you you'd never ever have to maintain the airplane. I mean, if, if you have, well, a 2,500-hour TBO on an engine, you know, you're never going to fly that much in a simulator, mm. or very few p people would. I had to do a a vector for a uh, tile line. It was driving me batty. <laughs> a self vector for tile line. It's a it's an yeah, official I, I maneuver. I, I can see it on the map. It's on a, exactly on the tile boundary. Uh huh. On the MFD. I hate it. All right, so uh, I think I'll shoot the ILS. Should I do the eight or the three? Mm. I think I'll do the. Mm. I'll do the eight. That's fine. Alright, so I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go to uh, f Procedures. I'm going to select the approach. I'm going to choose the ILS Runway 8 approach. And I'm going to hit Enter. Uh, I'll go from uh, Creston. Comster. That's a weird name. Yeah, S I think we've we already discussed that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I'm going to enter, and I'm going to scroll over to activate. Enter, activate. And then I'll go back to nav. Wants me to be at 6300 at Giselle, so I'll bug in, change my altitude to 6300. We'll come to the. We'll go into vertical speed mode. Go down at 700 feet per minute, and then I'm going to bring my engine back. I mean, right there we were getting 245 knots. Uh, across the ground only with 79% torque. Oh, I'm going to see a tile line again. Dang it. <laughs> and then we'll do a direct two. Oh, it's doing... Okay. You'll probably want to close the FMS page. I'm oh, sorry, the flight plan page. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to go to Kristen instead of Auto. It's still going. Uh, okay, so this is uh, this is a problem with the Garmin G1000 that I've reported to them. You got to use the PFDs direct two function. If there's two PFD, uh, if there's uh, three oh, screens yeah, yeah, rather yeah, than okay. two screens, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. then the G1000 from Laminar kind of does a little, little bit of a crazy thing. I'm going to 
I'm just going to hold my altitude here for a moment. All right, we'll come down here. And we'll come down here and we'll go flight plan. This is something that, that yeah, I remember discovering that early on. I was hoping that they had fixed it, but... Yeah, I kind of got blown off by them initially that uh, they're that getting uh, triple screen setups to work is not a high priority for them right now. Mm. <laughs> There's a new name, Torco Rico, <laughs> or Torco Rico, yeah. I like that. <clears throat> How forgiving is this plane IRL? It, is it more King Air or MU2, in your opinion, Todoriko? I don't know. Um, in terms of complexity to fly, I think it's much more, it's much simpler than a King Air or an MU2. So there isn't. Um, there isn't a whole lot to, to fly in it, to be honest. Um, I mean, the they've really redesigned, even though it doesn't have a fade act, they've really redesigned the throttle to make it so that it's, um, if you know what you're doing, it's really hard for you to misconfigure the airplane into a state where it'll misbehave. Always forget to switch tanks. Yeah, they. Yeah, this. I like the auto select on this one. I've seen the tank uh, move automatically in this one. That's nice. There are servos in them switches. Uh, you got to climb over that mountain range there. Yeah, I just put in a, a little climb ski. What aviator craft did he do? I don't know. What did he do? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm a mod and I'm not seeing anything. It deleted it deleted some messages apparently. It I it doesn't look like he got timed out though. Or he didn't get a hot 600, let's put it that way. All right, we're coming up. I don't, uh, I gotta look at this mountain range. Mm. I think I'll have to climb a little more. Yeah, you can get a lot more climb out of the airplane by uh, doing a flight level change and pulling the speed back. If you just want to do like a crazy climb. Okay, so uh, so I'm gonna the FLC. So I'm gonna hit the, the FLC oh. and pull the and pull the power back. No, no, no. If you want to climb, you don't want to be pulling the power back. You I was gonna say that. I, I, miss, I misheard that. Okay, so flight level change is in. And then the vertical scroll knob right next to the flight level change key. You want to make that. You want to push that upward, and you'll see the little pre-selected speed on the PFD will oh, change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to climb at 160. That yep. That's a very important spot. Yep. 100, climbing at 160 knots right there, folks. And you do that by, like I said, he said, just using the, the scroll wheel when you're on the VS up and down. Nice. I like it. You have been freed. If I, I, I guess if you have better TTV, oh, he said something about, he said something about Asian drivers. <laughs> I guess that was. <laughs> okay. All right, so there's 12, so I'll, I'll go ahead and now I'll hit. That's a nice, I like that IAS climb mode. Yeah, it's basically the IS mode.
All right, I'm gonna come down here and we'll see how the SciTech panel works with the nav radios. So over here on nav one and two, I'm gonna dial in uh, one eleven point niner, and I'm gonna hit. Also, one eleven point nine. I mean, you already got I. Uh, yeah. One eleven nine tuned in. Yeah, combo. I'm just testing, testing the nav two. Well, I can turn on the push ID you know, identification if you want to. If you want to identify it by voice, but you obviously it's already identified. ISPT. There, yeah, ISPT. All right, so now we're gonna come down here. We're gonna put in a. Course of zero seven nine, which needs to be in a different CDI in order for that to work. Okay, new no problem. Right. Yeah. So if you want to fly an ILS, then you obviously want to switch over the CDI mode to yep. localizer, VOR localizer mode. It's on PFDU one. If you just go back into the top level menu, yeah, there, you we're just there. Hit the CDI key, and then course zero seven nine. Okay, that's set. Let's go ahead and descend down to. I love that there's scroll, scroll wheel support. I love that. 6300, yeah, 6300. Bring back to power, go to vertical speed mode, and I'm just gonna go down at 900 feet per minute. A nice gradual descent. Bag of bonus to your question, who makes the TBM 900? The air real airplane is made by a company called Dayer Socata. And it's, I think it's a, it's a joint venture between two companies, the French Dayer and the American Sakata. Hello, Cooperfish, Bag of Bones. Serious Gamer, to your question, uh, the FPS, I'm um, aiming to have the airplane implemented in such a way so that it won't impact your frame rates in essentially almost any way. Um, it's all the custom graphics that are being drawn on these displays, which is really the um, heavyweight part of it, not the system simulation. That's not really all that hard. But basically anything that is sort of heavyweight is being rendered in, in background threads, and then it's being just flipped forward into your actual rendering output. So it's not slowing down, explain at all. Uh, same thing for uh, things that are more complicated that takes they take time during the simulation. So talking about simulating systems, uh, all those gonna just, happen in the background. Just to repeat, Neil, the the way that you go into IAS mode is that you can select, as you'll see here on the screen, that there is a speed. Um, once you come up here, you can use your mouse scroll wheel. To, oh, that's changing vertical speed because I'm in vertical speed mode. When you're not in vertical speed mode, you use the scroll wheel right here to change the IAS speed in the PFD, and then it'll, and then you hit flight level change, which is the FLC button right there. Yeah, and also what you can do, by the way, if you now click uh, the VS key off, so if you deselect VS and don't select any other mode it'll go into what's called a pitch mode. So it'll maintain okay. a constant pitch, and then the vertical scroll knob controls the preset pitch in the flight director. So if you play around with that, you'll see that it starts to move the flight director around. It'll say PIT on the PFD. Oh, now you can yeah. use the vertical scroll key to do it. To move okay, it around. yeah. Why would you ever do that? Uh, if you want to do like a constant angle descent. Mm. So if you set like a speed, I don't know, you want to fly 120, uh, I don't know, 120 knots at a three degree glide, uh, then you can use the okay. pitch mode. All right, I get it. And, okay, and when you go back to VS, it captures the current vertical speed. Yes. Okay. OK, 
Captain Ville wants an outside view. The the outside view is not com done yet, and it'll be, I'm sure, texturing and 3D object design and liveries made. It'll. This is just the alpha version of the plane, which it looks pretty good, <laughs> even though there's a lot more planned for it, right? Yes. Yeah. Quite a bit more. But the fact that it's in a... I better increase my speed here a little bit. All right, let's go... Vertical speed mode. You want to pre-select the new altitude first, because otherwise it immediately captures what you are at. I, yeah, I put, I'm in for 6300, and it's, for some reason, when I went into vertical speed mode, it's at, let's try it again here. All right, so now we're, now we're, yeah, it's been pre-selected for a lower altitude, but, all right, we're, we're good now. It's descending at a thousand feet per minute, or starting to get there. I'm going to do a vector here. So we'll go into sync our heading bug and we'll go into heading mode. We're going to rotate that. Try to make it a gold Z vector. Where are we going? Uh, we're landing uh, at Albuquerque, New Mexico, where we took off. Just a little, little flat around the desert. Yeah, this is uh, Laminar G1000, but uh, Total Ritko has customized it customized it um, so as you can see here all of this section over here is not laminar is that right all the engine gauges or is it just the yes. middle yeah that's all, all custom that's all custom there and then of course we can do other things like if I you know there's fuel pages and all kinds of different things system yeah we can look at that on the ground it's uh, if you resync the MFD again through that little uh, hidden click spot there. Oh yeah, 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 the hidden click spot, yeah. which is right. Now where right is it again? Right next to the backspace key. Oh yeah, backspace right next key. to the backspace key. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so there, there's the fuel, the custom fuel page. We got a generator. Oh, that's showing the pitot heat. The electrical page. That's all custom from Todorico. Amazing work. And all those systems work as they should. So all the um, corner cases are handled for the weird for the weird electrical configurations, and all the battery drains are corrected. The whole battery voltage and drain model is uh, redone. Yeah. How do I get that off the screen now? Uh, just r put it back into the. That's strange. How did you get it to that to be that kind of a broken state? Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. Just hit back there, um, and you know, just hit the screw, the, the hidden click spot again. Just one second. I want to see if this can... Uh, we're, we're really low. We're kind of playing around, but that's fine. We're testing. We're doing some gra um, crop dusting here on the approach. Uh-oh. That's a ground warning, probably. I'll hold my altitude here. Yeah, crop dusting, baby. That is the gear horn. Saying, uh, hmm. Autopilot off is probably what you want. Probably. You can just hit the key either on the yeah. uh, AP control panel or, or the ones on the yokes. Or if you have an AP disconnect on your stick, that works as well. Okay, flaps one. I've intercepted the localizer. Yeehaw! Let's hit approach mode. Keep the speed up. Will PE traffic display eventually is the question. Yeah, it sh in, fact, in fact it should display even now. 
but I'd have now. I might have to check that with uh, with some other details there in the G1000 and the la for, from Laminar. How many miles out would you put your gear down? Um, so the gear limit speed is 170 knots, and uh, basically when you're about 2,000 feet above uh, field elevation is a good point. Right well, about the five, five miles. About five miles out, you'd say. Mm, yeah, about about that. Okay. Four mile, four miles is good. Okay. All right, give me some landing tips, and then we'll work on that screen. <laughs> um, don't worry about beta for now. Uh, getting into beta beta power, so uh, just pull it back to flight idle, and just use your uh, pedal brakes. Can I go into landing flaps now? Uh, landing flaps is when you're in the white arc, so that'd be 125 knots okay. approximately. All right. Seems like it's coming in at a bit of an angle. Okay, coming into the white arc. Uh, once you're geared down, uh, you can pull the power all the way out so that you don't get the gear horn anymore. And you're about four miles out anyway, so you should be starting down now. Yeah, Dink Driver, I don't know. I don't know why the sounds aren't working. My deep bot broke. It's kind of bizarre. Oh, there's a train going into a tunnel right in front of me. Look at that. Wow. Man, it looks like you're, like you're about to land on the field in between uh, the Roman and some taxiway. Yeah, even though I'm on the, on the uh, ILS. It's interesting. That's uh, some offset problem with the ILS guidance or something. Yeah. Might be an airport scenery bug. You should go landing flaps now. Oh, you already are. Just pull the power all the way back because you're too fast. How? What should my landing speed be? Uh, 85 is the approach speed. Okay. I've landed this. Uh, I've landed at this airport before, so I'm not sure uh, on the ILS. I'm not sure what happened there. I won't worry about beta right now. Ground handling. Lemina. That is not too bad. I think my nose kind of came up. My nose wheel may have came up a little bit there, but. Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll get used to it. Yeah. Oop. And you're breaking a little bit faster at that speed. That's cool. Uh, landing rate was 104. Not that that really... Is, but... No one guessed. <laughs> yeah, it's not really hard to butter... Uh, butter a TBM. landing in the TBM. I, I have a feeling that I will not butter many t TBM landings. Because if you think about it, my approach speed was not ideal. I could have... I could have lawn darted that in no time at all. All right, let's turn. Whoa. I guess we should. Whoa, whoa. A little sensitive on the. Turn the taxi light on. Do I? I turned the pulse system off. I'm assuming at that point. 
Yep. Bring the flaps up. I mean, they they work basically as your landing lights. Yeah. That's the point of it. What's the maximum Super. pitch angle before a tell strike is the question from Padawan. Uh, probably more than the airplane will sustain in this kind of a flight attitude. I don't remember. But to be honest, right. you'd have to... You're not going to be able to f do a tail strike with the airplane flying um, without it actually starting to climb up. So on landing, you'll probably not be able to get a tail strike. On takeoff, the airplane... It will just fly off by itself at about 100 knots with just a little bit of... Uh, just a tiny amount of uh, back pressure. All right, let's shut down. The, you want to shut down the engine? I'm going to go over to the FBO. Oh, sure. I'm just enjoying the scenery. So, Payton, I, I don't remember the exact number. It probably is something around 12 to 15 degrees. It's going to be way higher than uh, you're going to stall the airplane uh, with... The landing flaps, uh, the maximum angle of attack is about 7 to 8 degrees. So anything above that, the airplane's just going to stall and it's going to drop the nose. So uh, I would not be... I couldn't imagine how you could stall it even e either on departure or on landing. I'm sorry, how you could uh, tail strike it. It's just not very long. I really like to taxi around 150 pounds of pressure. I like that slow taxi. <laughs> Are you not according to the video, you're not going slow, you're going 20 knots. Well, you're behind. Never under, underestimate our ability to break planes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I broke two things already: the the, uh, the engines, the flight manager, and also the screen. But that's why we're. That's fun to do it through. You know, put put a guy like me in the pit, and we can break things in no time. Okay, I'm gonna have to wrap up here. It's coming up to uh, 1:30 a.m. here. Oh wow! So. Well, we can do a shutdown next time. So thank you, Todoriko, for being here. Thank you for having me. And, uh, I mean, I do have still time for a shutdown, so don't worry about that. Okay, and I'll just, just pull right not going to be here. able to do a second flight. Okay, I'll pull up to the FBO, and we'll get that going. That's why we watch John Fly to see how to wreck things, yeah. The question is, have you been in a TBM? Uh, no. He's, he's done a lot of videos and pictures and tubes and documentation. Yep. I'm sure it's just a matter... It's I, I have a feeling you'll be in a TBM in, in 2018. You know, a real TBM. Could be, I don't know. Uh, I really do think so. But, yeah, I... I'm going to freely admit that this is not meant as a study simulation that's going to replace, that's going to like pretend to teach you how to fly the real airplane. So this is more of a, <laughs> this my, how my understanding is of how the airplane works from all, all the documentation and my other experience and you know, my knowledge of physics and all I, and, and aviation in general. I can only imagine that if you had, let's say 10 hours what you would tweak on this plane if you had 10 hours in the real world what you know in the right seat just watching someone do things you'd you'd get you'd have you have that uh discipline to go out and say you know what i need to get that into my simulator that same functionality oh yeah <laughs> um whenever yeah. i see something in a, in, a, in a video i see like Oop, i did this wrong so i'll mm. just go back and redo it that's impressive it's that no. all right shut down So shutdown is fairly simple. Just turn off the lights you don't want to have on, and uh, yeah. yeah, pull the condition lever into cutoff. Condition. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Thank you for fix fixing the bezel, by the way. It looks like it. you moved that just a bit. Okay. Fuel cut off. Yep. So basically to get it into to cut off, I had to slide it over to the right and then down. Yeah. So that's that brings you into the condition side, and that automatically also feathers the propeller. Mm. Then you go into a low idle, and then you pull it into cutoff, and after a couple of seconds, the engine will shut down. And I was actually in low idle, so I went, actually went to cutoff, and now it's coming down. So on the delay, you'll see it's still in low idle. Alrighty, and for example, a couple of the custom systems that have been simulated is the ITT decay when shutting down. Because X-Plane does an ITT decay that is extremely, extremely fast, so the ITT will drop to like, well, ambient temperature within a couple of seconds. That is not quite correct. So the ITT you can see right now is giving you about 200 degrees C, and it'll slowly, as the engine spins down, the, the drop will slow down. And it'll slowly cool off as the uh, as the engine basically just thermally radiates the heat at, heat away. Um, and the requirement, for instance, for an engine start is to have less than an ITT less than 150 degrees before attempting a start. Okay. Okay, and so now it's reached about 125C, and it's slowly going to be cooling off. And it'll take, to reach ambient temperature, it's going to take a couple of hours. And uh, you can just go to the overhead, just uh, push, uh, uh, just turn off the, uh, put the uh, auxiliary boost pump into off. Uh, the AP, well, you can leave the AP trims on, that's fine. And then just pull the crash bar down. Oops. Okay, crash bar coming down, nice. I'll use my chocks. And I can see as you also got the dimmer cabin and access lights on, you want to turn those off. The access light specifically is hot wired to the battery and it'll drain the battery if it's cool. left on. Nice. And then this backup, we can shut that down manually or it'll shut down in 4.3 minutes, which is fine. Yep. If you click any of the keys, the standby will uh, remain on battery power. Um, it is simulated in real time, so it has a bit, about a two hour battery and it drains and recharges in real time. So if you, turn, if you click any of the keys on it uh, right now, then it'll remain up in battery mode and it'll run itself all the way down to zero charge. That's basically your backup instrument in case the main instruments fail. Um, and if you do want to do a manual shutdown over that after you've initiated battery mode, it'll just hit the M key until it shows shut down and then just hold the plus until it shows shutting down. It's fairly simple. You can try it out right now if you want to. Okay. Shut Hit down. any of the keys. Yep, it's working. The delays, yeah, we're, it's already off. Cool. Chocks are on. I'll, I'll probably, after the stream, I'll probably reload the plane again and see if I can get that air, that uh, f um, aircraft manager menu to pop sure, up. Sure, I mean, you, probably will uh, work. Oh, you're going to wrap up the stream now? Uh, I may go fly something else. I may not. I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm in debate cool. mode. But uh, thank you for giving me the lesson. Thank you for um, teaching me about this wonderful bird. Thank you for your development on it. Thanks for flying and enjoying it. Yep. Great work. Have a great okay. evening. Get, get some rest. And you have a great rest of your day. And all you guys in the chat as well. Have a great day. And yeah. And if I don't see you guys before the new year, happy new year. Happy new year to you. See you, my friend.
it's not every day you get to hang out with uh, a wizard. I'm, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him a wizard. So, very. I feel very honored to be able to show the plane uh, in this in this alpha phase. It's just. It's just. It's it's very it's a it's a plane that uh, it's just it's, uh, the other day when I was testing it I was at flight level two seven zero at three hundred and twenty knots over Salt Lake City and it was, it was like wow this is fun in total we trust I think we should make that a uh, kind of a mantra um, yeah so so Total Rico is also uh, recently become a Twitch streamer. So be sure to check out his Twitch uh, development streams, and he'll probably be uh, flying as well. And and without question, he was added to the Global Sim Alliance. So we're honored to have him accept that uh, that invitation. And uh, yeah, right click and in Total we trust new mo new models exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think I think we should do a little Rady McRadsky. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for the for the subscriptions. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be as active in the chat, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for letting me show you a little bit of this uh, TBM 900. Josh J Gibbs will also be streaming the TBM 900, so stay tuned to Mr. Gibbs' stream. I'm gonna give a host just a little warning. This this guy's he's uh. He's got a little, uh, he's got a potty mouth like John Fly, so just just giving you a forewarning in case you have youngins around, but he's a real world traffic controller and he's streaming a ton, so I'm just going to give him a little hosty McHosty, but again, he's got a little bit of a potty mouth. Thanks guys for being here. See you later. Um, no, it's, That's probably you, Blue Eyes. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's the mixer, so, so I, put the, I pick up a combo.